Uh, so yeah, welcome to week nine of the Get Your Act Together project, uh, term two, um, with Cloth Cut. Um, as I show you each week, here is the information that you need um, for the other activities that are happening at the moment. So yeah, and uh, yeah, this is week nine. So we just have uh, this week and next week um, left uh, of this term of this term's course. Okay, so. Um, so last week, if you tuned in, um, or if you're watching this back, I uh, started to build a track from scratch. So currently we have our drums, we have our bass, uh, bass here, have a subby bass, and a bit more of a kind of a mid kind of bass. And um, I came up with some chords as well. And yeah, that is, these are the chords that we're using down here. Um, so this week, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be adding uh, a few kind of melodies. I have a lot of little synth sounds in there to kind of layer up the sounds that are already in there. Um, I will look at using some kind of effectsy type sounds um, at various points, um, in particular during the breakdown. And then I will look at putting a vocal in there. I'll see if I can find a vocal sample. And then we should be about there. That's pretty much all I'm going to add. Um, obviously, I'm time limited of um, in terms of producing this track. Uh, normally, I spend a lot more time um, working on everything. So uh, this is just a kind of a quick overview of the kind of a different the the main elements that I would add to a track. So during the week, um, I posted up a video around making a drum fill. So um, this is the drum fill that I put in here. Uh, so you just hear, if I just solo the drums here, you should be able to hear it right at the end um, as we come in here. So that was like the little drum fill that I put in there. So yeah, please re-watch the video uh, on my playlist, uh, the Cloth Cut YouTube channel. And um, yeah, it will show you how I made those drum fills, well, that drum fill there, and I will include it somewhere else um, within there. So um, what I need to do, the, the sound is kind of uh, glitching a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly convert this subby bass here. I'm gonna convert that into audio at these two different points. Okay, so a quick way of doing that, um, this is MIDI at the moment, highlight what you want to convert into audio. There are, uh, a couple of other ways you can do this and um, I'm going to be showing you uh, during the week this week show you how to convert everything into audio how to kind of bounce everything down um, so this is uh, one of the ways of doing it right click on it freeze the track it freezes that arrangement there and then you kind of see it's gone gone blue and then if you right click on it again and you put flatten and then what that does it turns it all into audio for us um, so now we no longer have, it's turned it from MIDI into audio. Um, get rid of that channel there, I don't need that there. And let's do the same with um, this synth line here. So right click, um, I'm happy with the automation I've put on there for now. Freeze track, and you should see the waveform should look a little bit different um, because I've kind of done a, a filter through there. Right click on there, right click again, flatten, now let's turn it into audio. It's still glitching a bit. I'm not sure why that is, but might be because I'm streaming as well. I think. So yeah, um, I'll be showing you during the week about how you do your, your drums as well. There's a couple of couple of ways of doing that so yeah I'll show you the, the way that I tend to do on there um, cool okay so next um, what did I say we we're gonna add let's add some melodies um, kind of synthy kind of synth line melody so what I'm gonna do here my grand piano uh, chords I'm going to grab the MIDI from there so I'm going to duplicate that and then we've got another version so I don't lose those chords and then um, let's have it kind of coming in during the, the break here, the breakdown here. Um, so let's think of a, a kind of sound that we can use. I'm going to go to the rhythmic sync, synth rhythmic section and see if I can find um, some sounds on here. So um, 
Oh, one thing I've just realised I haven't done. Read a disclaimer. Okay, so let's quickly read this. Uh, so if you're under 18, please tell your parents that you're doing this session. Feel free to ask any questions and make comments, but stay safe online by just using your first name. Don't give out your contact details, and I hope you enjoy today's session. So yeah, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments, and I'll reply to them at the end. Cool. So um, yeah, synth. Um, there was a couple of synth sounds that I was going to show you. Uh, these are all like presets. There's nothing wrong in using some presets just to kind of get some ideas. Okay, so I like the idea. I like the sound of that there. So the grand piano, uh, at the moment, this is what it's doing. So I want to change that. So double click on there, change the grand piano, click the circle here. It turns orange and then I'm going to go back to, where was that, uh, Synth Rhythmic, go down to RHY Ultra Tremble. Okay, so I'm going to add that in there. So now, turn down this tremolo because that's quite, quite intense. So you can see that. See that? Um, da, da, da. Let's change that. So let me just move this over so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, a tremolo here. So at, at the moment it's uh, quite intense. Let's change some of these settings a little bit. FM down a bit. Do that in the middle. Okay, that sounds good. I like that. Um, and then let's just check what's happening with the. Uh, yeah, there's a delay on there, so let's turn that up a little bit. It's going to duplicate that a little bit of MIDI there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to automate the uh, volume on there as well. So go down to the mixer, settings, select uh, track volume, and then that will allow me to have that fade in. Um, let's have it kind of fading in from, from the bottom to about there. And then, yeah, that was the original volume it was at. So let's just turn that down a little bit. Bring it down to two. There we go. Cool. Let's have that kind of fade in immediately. Let's have it kind of come in a little bit louder first. That would be cool. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to, because there is actually, there's a little bit, um, if I just solo it, you hear it kind of carries on for a little bit after. So um, what I might actually do there, instead of having it on the audio, actually let me see if this works. Um, so if I just quickly freeze it, if I uh, freeze it and then convert that into an audio channel, and then let's see um, if it will keep the delay after as well. Um, so let's quickly flatten that. Yeah, it has kept the delay, which is cool. That's quite a nice little, that's chopped it there, it's quite cool, because I can use that somewhere else in the track as well. So for example, I could copy that and put it right at the beginning there. And that will sound quite nice as a kind of added little um, kind of effect on there. So let's just chuck that in there. Um, okay. A 
Okay, I like that. Uh, so let's do another synth. Um, spoke a lot about kind of adding layers and layers of sounds. Um, and this is what we do here. So it's just kind of using the same notes, but with different sounds, different frequencies, and then kind of building up those layers. And then when we come to mix it, we'll kind of EQ them so that they kind of stick out nicely in the mix. Um, so let's find another one. Um, where was the second sticks? Here they are. Okay, let's take that one. Um, let's see if I, yeah, if I just drag it and drop it there, that's turned that into um, that one there. So how does that sound here? Oh, didn't like that. Let's maybe not use that one. Yeah, doesn't like that. <laughs> um, but because, I, like I said, I'm streaming as well, so it's using quite a lot of my, my processor at the moment. Um, Let's try something else. Uh, if you remember in the past, uh, one of my previous videos, I showed you about using uh, the arpeggiator or the chords. So let's give uh, the arpeggiator a little go uh, with the pianos that I've got there. So if I um, bypass that. So that's what the chords were doing there, but with the uh, 16th. And then let's change that. Let's see if I can change it to a, like a more of a simple synth instead. So instead of it being um, quite processor heavy, let's see if I can find one which is a bit more simplified, which I can kind of use um, as a kind of 16th kind of effect on there. Something like that. Let's try that. And I'm just going to lose that now. Um, so it wasn't that, it was the piano I'm changing. Uh, go to your sounds, find synths. Uh, where are you? Synth lead. Let's try that one. Nice. A nice little bit of delay on there as well so um, let's uh, convert that into um, tell you what let's pull it in here let's have it so it goes on the on the breakdown um, sorry after after breakdown on the drop let's hear what that sounds like there's a build up Because I quite like using that. If you're noticing my drums here, I've got my kind of 16 hi hats going on there. So if you kind of use a synth, which is kind of also doing like a 16th rhythm, they quite complement each other. I say. Um, okay, let's take that and also freeze, freeze the track. Um, there is a reason why I'm converting everything into audio. When it comes to mixing down your tracks. Uh, I strongly recommend um, turning them into audio um, instead of mixing mixing the MIDI channels down. Um, one, because it, um, it's also a bit processor heavy having loads of MIDI instruments in there, but also um, you can EQ them much better and you can kind of edit the audio much better than you would be able to with the MIDI. Um, so I've always done it this way. There's some people who, who keep their uh, MIDI and have audio tracks separately. Um, mix them all down together but I just like to turn everything into audio and um, I don't know say for example when you come to do um, there might be some producers who come to remix your song at a later date and you'd want to send them the stems over so it's just easy kind of having them um, how they exactly how they sounded within your track um, so let's have what is this all delayed at the, at the end there so I'm just going to quickly turn a bit quiet this, wasn't it? You can see the audio there is quite quite small. So let's just turn it up a little bit, a bit more. See the waveform's getting bigger. Okay, cool. And then what I'm also going to do, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to duplicate this once. And then let's get our drum drums back from there. Um, 
So I'm kind of having this 16 section. So I'm kind of just building it up a little bit more. So we go our drop, our build, and um, break down, drop into this section here, have the base kind of carry on underneath. And then I'm going to copy this filtered base and have that carry on um, for this little section here. So the drums might simplify the drums just a little bit here, and then it will kind of build up, and then we kind of get our kind of second drop. Um, so let's have that going there this time. And then we'll be introduced to 16 section again. Um, might say, well, I'll cut that little bit out. So we have another little breakdown and then duplicate um, this section here. So I'm kind of copying everything there. So what I kind of did there, I clicked at the top, first one there, held down um, shift and then clicked at the other end um, of what I wanted to kind of highlight. Select it, do command and C. And then if I just click, um, I could just delete that, click on where I want it to paste. So this is right at the top and then paste it and it's kind of just copied that over again. And um, so let's take, that's the 16 drums there. Let's take the drums and the bass and that effect sound there. Oops. Shift and click, move it over one more, grab that one and then paste it in there. How long is our track at the moment? It's about three and a half minutes. Normally it would make it longer than that, but um, yeah, this is just a quick demo. Um, let's have the bass. Let's have this little section come back in, in again. And um, um, let's copy these little sections as well. Let's copy that, have that come back in there. And then this one here, have that comes back in there. So that's all good. Um, so you include the build up sound, pop that in there, and then also let's have that come back in there as well. So you kind of get a few kind of little build ups and drops. So, how does this sound? Let's just go just before the drop. Take that out there. Okay, so a um, couple of other little tweaks I'm just gonna make there um, is the symbols. So I'm just gonna quickly join um, all the drums up together. So again, shift, uh, so I click on the first one, highlight that, shift, click on the end one, uh, click on the color, not underneath, it doesn't work if you do it under there. And then um, command and J, there you go. Let's just turned it all into one nice big long MIDI track. Um, so my drum fill, I've only got that in, uh, going on once, so where does it happen? 
Okay, so let's highlight the drum fill. And then let's highlight that as well, because I want that crash to uh, be included in there as well. So just minus. Um, no, that's not where it goes. This one, is it here? Yep. So we've got our build up. And we've got a nice little drum fill there. Might just take off that first kick from there. So how does that sound? There you go. So you kind of got a couple of snares and a um, and a tom in there. Try another one here. Try it coming in here as well. And then I'm going to include one more drum fill right at the end of this section here. So let's delete these. Again, shift. Uh, or you can just draw a box around it. Oops, why haven't you drawn that? Do, do, do. There we go. And then copy and paste. Oh, where did he go? Oh, yeah, I only copied that one last time, didn't I? Um, there, where are you? You're that section there, aren't you? If I highlight it from this side, then I can grab the crash. Will it let me? Yeah. Good. Scrolled across. Where did he go? This section here, wasn't it? There we go. Oops. And then we'll do one little drum fill right at the end, and this will indicate uh, that the track is coming to an end. So the symbol, um, I think I mentioned this in my uh, previous video, but using symbols, uh, a kind of crash is quite a quite a common um, technique to kind of indicate that we're going to another section. Um, and it's good for, uh, yeah, when you're DJing, you kind of listen out for the crash, that's a, a good, tells you that yeah now we're moving on to the next section it might be a new phrase it might be a breakdown it might be a drop whatever but it kind of yeah this is a new section so let's put another crash in towards the beginning so we've got it comes in here i just turn the velocity down on that so it's not as loud these little little tweaks little things that you can do just to kind of make your track uh, stand out even that little kind of delay sound there which I quite like let's put let's try the other one let's put that on the opposite um, not on the opposite the other halfway through the phrase three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four. and then halfway through we get a little and what I might even do give it even more effect because um, I don't want there to be loads of delay on this one here so just a quick way quickly duplicate that and um, what we'll do we'll take off these other parts here just so that we're left with the kind of the delayed sound so one we've got our other one here the fifth stab lead uh, simp 16 -y kind of one and then um, We've got the other one here, and I'll do that on uh, on this one here as well. So, get rid of those ones there. On this one here, get rid of the uh, other sound. Get that rid of that one there, and then yeah, on these ones here as well, just so we can kind of isolate those. And then let's put those together. And then I'm going to put a nice uh, ping pong delay or simple delay. Let's try it with a simple delay. See how that comes across. Go to your reverb and delay. Well, I've got mine saved up here. Um, pretty simple delay. Drag and drop that onto here. Let's just hear how that sounds on its own. Let's have it feedback going up a bit. Okay, cool. So I want to apply that to the other sound. 
copy paste and now it's got the same delay on there as well let's have, have a listen to what that sounds like now with everything else These little, little things that make all the difference, I think. Okay, just a little bit of editing here. Um, little idea that's just come into my head here. So um, with the bass, I just quite might just going to introduce the little bass idea, um, just a little bit here, bit by bit. So let's just take off that there. So we've got. Okay, just going to kind of halve that. So we kind of introduce it, so it kind of tees people into what's what's coming next that bass across. And then you'll hear it kind of come in here properly. this across so it kind of goes on over there delete that one let's get another symbol in there Just copy that, copy, and then pop it on there. Because it seemed like it, it needed something there. <laughs> Have a little bit of audio editing oh just delete that they want to do that um so let's get a, a kind of make it build up a little bit more here oh, it was in this drop here wasn't it there we go so if i just quickly solo this i'm just going to chop up so this is again this is another reason why it's worth um converting all your midi into audio just because you can kind of drop it chop it up move it around and um, yeah, splice it up a bit and you can get some cool little uh, effects from doing it just by kind of copying and duplicating little sections. Um, so what does it sound like here? So let's see, how does it sound if I copied that over? So that's doing the same there. Uh, let's see if I just copy this bit here instead. And then um, these ones here, if I reduce that by half, and then do it again, but even smaller. Keep zooming in. Oh, come on. Let's 
maybe I've got the let's change the um, the grid that's what I need to do here no why aren't you going over turn it off you don't want to go over do you um, let's do it this way instead you're not going to let me do it are you <laughs> okay let's just keep it as it is it will still sound good um, put the grid back on okay so now we've got our kind of build up and then I'm just gonna cut out that little bit there just so um, there's a gap and then it'll just give it a bit more impact uh, as it drops in there we go So I think we kind of got the basics there. What happens at the end here then? Nice. Sounds like quite cool at the end that does. Um, and then, as before, put a symbol on the end. And that's the end. Okay. Um, yeah, how long is it then? Just under three, three minutes 40, which is actually around the sort of length of a, of a radio edit. Um, so I could obviously uh, extend the breakdown a lot more. Um, some other little section or maybe another section have like a little bridge in there extend the outro and the intro a little bit more um, but the basics are in there so um, one other little tip um, I'm surprised I haven't shown you this yet but really really important that when you come to um, when you when you get into producing and you're writing lots of tracks I've said about being organized with like your sample files sample packs uh, folders where you save your work everything like that also, another tip is color coding. Um, and it's really, really useful to kind of color code all of your work, everything that you're kind of working on. Um, just so that from a distance, um, you can see what's going on um, and what's doing what. Um, so I tend to do my drums a yellow. This is the kind of color palette that I use. My bass is purple. My effects and build up sounds are green, kind of like bright green. Um, my synths are pink and pianos are pink. So let's just highlight all of those. Right click and then turn those pink. And then um, there's that drum fill there. And then vocals would be orange. So um, yeah, let's let's pop a vocal in there. Let's see if I can um, actually. Let's see if tell so you before I do that. Let's get a um, another like kind of effectsy kind of build up sound in there. So I'm just going to quickly insert a MIDI track. Um, let's get a kind of effectsy kind of build up sound. So uh, which one was I looking at before? So those sweet rhythmic bells. Let's try some of those sounds. And then um, there's a section here, which was uh, not in the rhythmic. Effects. Yeah, effect. So there's a reso, reso sweep. That sounded quite nice before. So I'm just going to um, double click here, create. Um, a MIDI, like a piano roll, and then let's have, let's make you a bit bigger. Yeah, that should be fine there. And then um, what key are we in? 
I think it was an F, wasn't it? Let's go back down to my piano. Here's my piano. What was the, the root note was F, I think it was. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to pop an F, a held F note in there. Let's have it around middle C, that octave. Stretch that across. Now we've got. Yeah, that's too short. <laughs> Have it going. Let's edit it this way. Doing it long way. Let's put that back on apes. It's better. Let's have it go. Let's have it for one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah. Drag that across. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then where was it here? And then drag that across. Ah, it's done it on a loop, that's why. Here we go. Drag that across. Is that actually doing them? Let's have that last a little bit longer. Let's change the. Um, tell you what, let's let's try something else. Um, rhythmic bells. I was using last time. Do, 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 rhythmic bells and noise. Let's try that one. Rhythmic bells. No, don't like that either. <laughs> what else was I looking at? Um, dub filtery one. Where are you? Dub filter. There we go. That's what I was after. Okay, so um, what does that sound like on its own? Okay, so I'm just going to change the time so that we put it back up to there. That's quite loud, isn't it? Down a little bit. Okay, so let's um, freeze that, convert it into audio, flatten, and then um, on its own. So we'll use that two ways. Let's use it in this section here. Let's move it so as soon as it comes, goes into that break, we hear it. How does it sound when it goes into the break? We've got our build up sound under here as well. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop it over here and then double click and then reverse. Um, so you can see that there is a little reverse. So that's turned it the other way around now. And now let's um, have that so it kind of builds up instead this time. So we've kind of have it going one way. Um, and let's have it uh, kind of fade up. Da -da -da, track volume. And let's kind of have it going from there to there and then fading up. Sounds quite nice there. Um, tell you what, let's have it going here instead. Because we've got one here. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, I like that. Okay, so like I said before, uh, my effectsy sounds, I make those green, that bright green. Um, how are we doing time wise? Okay, um, and let's get a vocal in there. Um, 
this. I'm just gonna use like a vocal, like a vocal sample. Um, not gonna actually sing for you or anything like that. Oh God, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, I make my vocals orange, and then let's see if I can find a vocal sample. So I've got a folder here with, I haven't got loads of acapellas, but I've got some, um, some in there. Because it's in F, okay, another little, little cheat trick um, is to find uh, other vocals that are, or other sounds, if you're adding more sounds, audio loops, that are in the same key. So it tells you down here a lot, sample packs will tell you. Um, if you like one and it's not in the same key, then uh, you have to transpose it. So um, let's see if this works. So we've got. I hope you're feeling me. Let's try this one here. So in the breakdown here. Okay, how did that sound in the breakdown? Okay, I like that. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split it though. So just take the second half, move that over, and then let's do the same a little bit further along. And then I'm gonna chuck on, oh, let's see actually, let's have a look at what's happening on in the end here. Okay, so um, let's move that back. And you see that the vocal comes in here as well. So I'm just gonna move that, I don't want I don't want to have that bit in there. And it's kind of shifted it a little bit, but let's see how that sounds. I'm sure it'll still be in time. Let's zoom out of there, duplicate that, copy, 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 paste. Actually works with um, the synth that's on there. The vocal's doing the same thing. Um, and let's get a, a delay on there. Check a simple delay on, turn the feedback up. And then what I'm gonna do here, cause it's kind of got a bit of delay already in the um, actual uh, audio file. So I'm just gonna automate the, um, the dry wet signal so that it's just on that little UUU after. So from there, um, let's turn that down. Keep it up there first, and then let's have it kind of coming back in there. So it fades down, and then it go, goes back to oops the dry signal there. So how does that? Let's just let's solo it. How does that sound? You can turn that feedback up a little bit more. Um, let's go back to there, and then I'm just gonna copy all of that across to there. And that includes the automation, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, that should be fine. Um, and let's have all of this. Well, let's have two of them. Come in. That break there, yeah. Let's try it there. Delete that. Don't know why that's there. And then we'll have, oops, let's have it come back in uh, during the drop. So where's the sixteen drums that come back in? You just chuck them in. See how it sounds in a, couple, a few other places. <laughs>
seems a little bit off. So, um, why is that? Let's look at the actual audio. Seems to be alright there. It sounds nice, just a little bit off actually. So let's change that. Put that back on there. Let's copy that across there. Let's see what it sounds like now. Have a little, little, little break. Sounds a little bit off that vocal there for some reason. Let's have a look why. Ah, because I've put it off. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Why is that not taking that off? There we go. It sounds better there. That looks better there. Let's make sure that that kind of carries on. To let's delete that one there. All right. There you go. So that should go down nice and smooth. They're on. They're on bar. Cool. I'm going to do here like I had at the beginning. I'm just going to copy this little base to go here instead. Well, delete that first and then paste it. There we go. Duplicate that. How does that sound? There you go. So I quickly save that. Right then, um, so those are all my elements there. Uh, another quick shortcut there, Shift Z, this kind of minimizes everything there. So I've got my drums up here, my bass, little vocal, effect sounds, and then my synths here. So if you note here that, um, I'm gonna delete that drum too, I don't need that, need that anymore. And then note here that the piano is actually muted, so you don't actually hear the piano. So when I began this song, I just started off with a couple of chords and then I've managed to use those chords across all the other instruments, the basses and the synth sounds there. And yeah, it all sounds decent, which is quite good. So um, yeah, normally on my tracks, there's probably, um, uh, I say about three or four times as many um, channels as this. So there's more basses, there's a lot more effects going on, more synths, more kind of synth layers. 
and definitely uh, drums. Um, so yeah, um, that's everything together. So um, what I'm going to be doing um, next week is I'm going to be mixing this all down um, so it sounds good and then do a quick master and then my track will be complete. So I'll be showing you how to do that. Um, so yeah, um, I'll just check if there's any questions from anyone. Uh, no questions. So um, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so brilliant. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And um, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel for Cloth Cat. And um, just so that you will receive notifications um, as to when all the other activities are happening. And then, um, yeah, I'll be posting up one of my uh, weekly top tips uh, next week. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye.